Well, you guys, I finished the challenge. 30 days with Kiara Lachey, the Tabata challenge, and my results, as you can see, yes. Um, I wasn't really worried about pounds, so I actually went down to dress size, which is amazing. I am now back into a medium, yes. So in October, she's going to be doing another challenge where you can sign up. So hit the link down below and sign up for the next Kiara Lachey Trap and Tone Challenge in October. And don't forget about the tea, y'all. The tea really aided in the look, okay? If you think it happened in a month, all because I was working out, no. It's also because of the tea. Sometimes I still ate pizza. But yay! Hey everybody, what's up? Hold up, where am I looking? Hey everybody, what's up? It's your girl Bondi Blue and I'm back for another Married at First Sight review, you guys. Okay, this episode was actually really good. I enjoyed it. Um, if you did not watch it, a lot of you guys do not watch the actual shows, but you do watch the reviews. So I'm going to try my best, okay, in order to relay this to you, because this episode was really good. And I feel like sometimes you just gotta watch things. You know what I'm saying? you don't get all the little small things you know what i'm saying and a lot of times the, the in these shows especially like in scripted shows it's a little small thing so you should definitely be watching those scripted shows for yourself um but whatever i'm sorry let's go ahead and get into <laughs> look my mind it's early you know what i'm saying i haven't done anything else but make notes for one show that was two hours long which was love after lockup so that is gonna be you know two videos from now so I'm trying to gather myself. I should have got on live on Instagram. Like that usually helps me perk up a bit mentally, but like, fine. Let's just cut it from the, you know, from the gate, from the jaw. Let's see how this works out. So Olivia and Brett, y'all, Brett has this thing about himself. Like, you know what I'm saying? That's like really annoying to me. <laughs> like, am I the only one that sees it? Okay, anyway, they both talk to their friends about everything that has transpired since they decided to get married at first sight. What's very annoying to me is the way Brett always categorizes the things on the show as involuntary or forced, when it's all something you signed up for. There have been 10 seasons of this show, so you have seen how this show works out. You shouldn't ever get on a show if you haven't watched it before, that's just dumb. I'm just saying, like, why Why would you not research before you put yourself into a situation like this on national television? So I get a lot of annoyance from Brett with the whole process. Him and Henry seem to, like, really not, well, not just Henry. I'm not even going to say Henry. Henry doesn't like it, but he doesn't act like Christina does about it. Like, there are people who really just don't enjoy the process of taping. And, I, you know, I feel like, well, what did y'all think this was going to be? It's been, like, 20, 30 years of reality shows at this point. Like, why don't you understand that people are going to be around you taping, asking questions. You're going to have to do, you know, confessionals, like all of this stuff like that happens on every reality show. And it just annoys me how they complain about it and how they act about it as if they had no idea and that they didn't sign on, you know, sign on for this. Like somebody's forcing them to do it. It's just kind of annoying to me. And Brett, you know, talks about the process to his friend in that manner. And I feel like I like the way his friend was kind of checking him. You know what I'm saying? Like, well, you know kind of signed up for it <laughs> you know what I'm saying like I also don't like the way Brett talks about Olivia spending as if it's frivolous as if she doesn't take care of her responsibilities no I just have a surplus of money so I have money to spend on entertainment and going nice places you're poor so you don't have that money so you budget for the things that you want to do and that's great that's great but everybody doesn't have to live like that and it seems as if you're butthurt about the fact that she makes more money than you and you don't want to say it Woody and Imani, on the other hand, are waking up to breakfast and enjoying each other's company and feeling so hopeful about the future with their relationship, and we love it. And it's such a juxtaposition from Brett talking to his homeboy about this process. <laughs> like, it's so different. Ben and Amelia talk to their friends about one another, and they really like each other. She has to move soon. And he's open to following her, which is something that his homegirl is not too happy about. You know, you often feel like whenever there are these relationships um, or friendships with the opposite sex, you know, especially on these reality shows, like, you know, 90 Day Fiance in this show and, you know, um, Love at the Lockup, there's always a friend who's in love with the person and they're just so upset. <laughs> 
okay? They're just so upset that the person has decided to be with someone else and they're still trying to be a friend, but not really because they're like kind of sort of sabotaging the situation. And that's how I feel about Bennett's friend that he's talking to. Like, you know, I don't want you to leave. You know what I mean? It's like, well, I mean, he has a wife now, sis. So, uh, you know, you'll be okay. Like, Karen and Miles have a conversation about how she needs to open up a little bit more. She needs to communicate. She needs to gas him up a bit. Like, let him know you're feeling him because it's hard to tell sometimes, sis. You're hard to read. And, you know, I mean, but to me, I feel like she has no problem vocalizing when she doesn't like something. So I don't understand why you can't vocalize the things that you do like. But she admits that that's something she has to work on. And he asked for a kiss. He wants a kiss. He wants some intimacy. He wants to have sex and <laughs> something. And, you know, she's still on pause. And it's just kind of like, you know, I know this is going to be a slow process. But I think we've all figured out that if he was some toxic man who, you know, snatched her panties off, she'd be all down for that. But because he is actually trying to let her take the lead on when she's ready, which is what she says she wants, um, it seems as if that's not as attractive. It, it seems like that in a lot of these situations, women want aggressive men. And men that aren't aggressive are sometimes a turnoff because it's kind of like, well, I don't know what to do with you. And I feel like Karen feels that way and I feel like Christina feels that way. But Karen's is not even just about being aggressive, you know, sexually. I think it's more so about her liking toxic men. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, to me, it's just the way it comes off based off of everything she's shown us thus far. It's not just about her not wanting to have sex. It's about the way she looks at him being, you know, emotional or being in touch with his emotions and knowing how he feels about things as if that's a bad thing. You know, somebody who cries because apparently men don't have tear ducts. I did not know. Or they're supposed to get that lump in their throat that stops them from crying but hurts them all in the throat. They're supposed to do that because if they do that, then that doesn't make a woman feel uncomfortable with having to deal with her man's emotions. Like, <laughs> grow up. He still doesn't get the kiss at that moment, but he gets it later and it looked nice. It looked comfortable, okay? And she felt like, you know, great, we finally got it out the way. And I'm just kind of like, she is going to keep putting a knife through the sugar, ain't she? <laughs> like, she is going to keep souring the joint up, ain't she can't let us have a moment so they're having a party and inviting their friends okay everybody has to do this Christina and Henry are talking about the party and what they're gonna do at the party and she kind of looks at the camera and she's like and scene and you know production at this point is just kind of like what's the problem we've only been filming for like 15 minutes it's a short scene you're not the director you're not the producer you're the talent so have the conversation, okay? But she feels like she's pulling teeth out of Henry. She's tired of being the one that asks the questions. She's tired of being the one that engages in the conversation. I understand how she feels, but at the same time, she comes off like such a, a brat. You know what I'm saying? And that's a turnoff to Henry. But, you know, it's also a turnoff to her that Henry doesn't engage and doesn't look her in the eye. And, it, you know, even though that's an issue he has to work on, it's just a lot of things that are issue just outside of the production of the show for Henry and Christina. You know what I'm saying? And I can see that. Henry tries to continue the conversation. They talk about the games the producers want them to play and she feels like it's always on her and he didn't even thank her for getting the groceries and getting the party together. And he's like, well, you didn't thank me for all of the dinners that we had previously. And she's like, I did thank you. And he was like, well, I didn't hear it. And, you know, it's like this stupid argument about who said thank you when we're, really we're arguing about the fact that she wants sex and he doesn't want to give it. He says that she's impatient all the time and that's really, you know, annoying for him. And I just kind of feel like, you know, that is true, but at the same time, just because her annoying behavior is like a loud outward behavior, it does not mean that, you know, you're not doing just as much aggravation with not saying any, anything and not doing anything. Like that infuriates people just as much if that's something that, you know, makes you upset when you're trying to engage and the other person isn't really engaging. Like that's just, <laughs> that's a pet peeve for me. So I understand Christina, but I still feel like she comes off like a brat and she should really check that. Everyone gets together, okay, all the couples, 
And they were talking about the types of music that, you know, they all like. And I think Bennett was like, you know, I listen to jazz and R&B and she listens to like rock, indie rock. And I was like, oh, wow. Like, I think I, I would get along in their house, like with their music selections, both of them. Because, you know, a girl does love her indie rock. Um, but a girl absolutely loves her jazz and R&B. But I am also a hip hop track person. You know what I'm saying? Like, it just depends on the musician. Because a lot of the times, like, just because I say I like hip-hop and trap, that doesn't mean put on, you know, this generation's version of trash-ass music that all sounds the same. Because I swear, if I have to go to another family gathering with my niece and my little cousins and them playing loud, terrible music over and over and over again, cha. Whoo! Like, I'll just listen to R&B and jazz all day because I know that that's going to be good. Nine times out of ten. With rap, there is way too much room for error. Amelia talks about possibly having to move. And Olivia brings up that Brett has an issue with the way she spends her money. And if she spends it haphazardly. And he talks to the guys about how she makes more money. And so she spends frivolously. And Woody, okay, Woody does a confessional which was hilarious. And says that she likes nicer things. She makes more money get over it <laughs> okay y'all gonna go to those nicer places and she gonna pay for it okay and y'all will be okay like it's always gonna be an issue because she make more money than you and she's gonna want to do those things like period i thought it was a key key because he was spot on and henry uh talks about christina being high maintenance and she talks to the girls about being the only one doing everything and how she's tired of that and how that's kind of a deal breaker for her at this point karen Finally kiss Miles, okay? She told the girls that. And Woody tells Henry that Christina just... She want that dick, 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 she want that dick. She want it, but he can't give it. I don't get it. Why not? Give her the dick. Give her the dick. Give her the dick, 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 Okay, give it up, Henry. You're being a tease. Brett and Olivia go over a budget, okay? And he wants her to tighten up a little bit, you know? Just don't eat out as much. Now, they're having this conversation as he's making, like, steak and, um, 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 what was it? Asparagus for her? And it looked really good. It looked like it tasted. It looked like he knew how to season his food, okay? But it's also, like, New Orleans people. And in general, I feel like even if you are Caucasian, New Orleans people know how to, like, season their food. Especially, like, steaks and asparagus and stuff like that. That's really easy. Um, as long as you have your Worcestershire sauce, you all right. Okay? <laughs> but she says if he keeps cooking for her like this, she won't eat out as much. And then that'll be, you know, um, their little trip and activity money. Instead of spending it on, you know, going out to eat, you put it away so it can make up for whatever amount of money that he can't afford to pay for y'all to go and do the nice expensive things that you may like to do. Boom, bow, pow. We've handled it. Henry and Christina make up after their argument and all their friends come over. And based on the questions, Henry is seemingly more so about sex than intimacy. And I don't understand that because he seems like the type of person that needs the intimacy in order to have the sex. Because if not, why haven't you had it with Christina yet? She's begging for it, for God's sakes. They talk to their partners, you know, family and friends in separate rooms. And she wants him to touch her, for God's sakes. And his friend says that he was there for her when her sister died. So when people think that he's not, you know, in touch emotionally, he really is. And I'm like, yeah, but if I'm trying to bone, how does that help me? You know what I mean? Like, I appreciate you telling me that. How does that help me get him to bone? Like, what is the issue? He tells her family and friends that, you know, they haven't had sex yet. And it's kind of like her homeboy is badgering him about it, which was really awkward, but he handled it well. You know, he kind of had a sense of, humor, sense of humor about it. But I just kind of feel like, what's the, what's the problem? Like, are you attracted to her? Or are you not attracted to her? Because she can't always be an asshole, right? At some point, she has to be agreeable and you have to like her in order for you to want to continue on in this process. So I'm just confused by Henry and I wish he would just spit it out and say whatever the issue is that he has with her that he doesn't want to have sex with her. You know what I'm saying? Because I feel like we can just get drunk one night and bone. Like, that's my plan for this evening. So I just kind of don't understand. Like, <laughs> it's the problem. It's the problem. Woody and Imani have their friends over and they play Never Have I Ever. 
Um, of course, Amani has not done as many things sexually as Woody has, and she wins a massage. Then he and the men talk, and her and the other women talk, and, you know, everybody just talks about, you know, how they're feeling and how Woody and Amani are really into one another. And it, it just kind of goes without saying. Like, seeing them together, I think, is a teller of how much they're really into each other. Like, seeing them talk and play this game and sit next to each other and kiss and touch and, you know, whatever my wife say and, you know, whatever my husband say. And, you know, it's just cute. It's cute. I'm here for it. Everybody feels really good about it. And then he tells his homeboys how he got the draws, okay? <laughs> you know, which was um, way nicer than what I just said. But still, it was just the way he got the draws. Why does one of his homeboys not know what like 92 hours is or 90 some odd hours is? Like, just think about it in terms of 24, sir. Like, that means it's probably about four days. Like, what's the problem? <laughs> like, why we couldn't do this math in our head a little bit? Like, and I'm terrible at math, but I was just like, maybe he was just drunk. Because I feel like when I'm drunk, I can't, I, look, whatever. Okay? I can't figure out normal stuff. I can't spell normal stuff. And then I look at it later, and I'm like, when did I spell that wrong? <laughs> My brain, y'all. Anyway, Karen and Miles have their housewarming party, and he talks to her friends about how he helps her with her car and around the house so that she's not stressed out because her homegirl wanted to know what he does to help her dealing with the stress of her job, you know, and he just says, hey, her car was broken, so I got that fixed for her. You know, I try to make sure around the house is clean so she's not stressed out, you know. <laughs> I don't feel like this is a matter of what he's doing for her. It's a matter of what she's going to do for him. He's already done it all. To me, he's already been, you know, holding all the bags, you know, uh, holding doors open, pulling out chairs, paying for meals, you know, being considerate of her feelings and taking it slow to make sure she's comfortable with whatever he's doing. Like, he's already done that. When is she going to, you know, show the consideration for him? As far as I'm concerned, I haven't really seen it that much yet, okay? Her friend also tells him she needs a man who can take charge, okay? And what we mean by that is toxic masculinity. Just show it every now and again. You know, like, buck up on it. She'll be in love with you forever. Karen talks to his sister about Miles being the type of person that is always catering to whoever he's with. And she doesn't know if Karen is the girl for her brother. She doesn't know. Because it seems as if, you know, Karen is waiting for another shoe to drop. Like, he's fronting about who he is. And no, that is who he is. Why do you think he's faking with you? Why do you think him going to work is going to all of a sudden make him this terrible person and you've been waiting to, to meet this terrible person? Like, no. Like, no. That's not who he is. He is this person. But everybody has good and bad days. So I feel like whenever he does have a bad day, she's going to overly, you know, um overly assess or judge the situation or be looking for an out in it so i y'all karen just makes my nerves bad y'all then they play truth to death it was a good time had by all olivia and brett have their friends and family over and they play a game and you know they have a good time and olivia talks to her friend about the issues that she's having with brett feeling like she has to give up her life in order to be with him she has to give up her nice you know house that she pays for she rents it so she feels the need to move into his home because he owns it you know that would make sense but it's 45 minutes away from her job you know right now she's closer to her job her place is cute his place is ugly you know it's not something a woman can't fix but still you know like why do i have to upset my life for lesser that that's what it is and i understand where she's coming from and i don't know if i was her if i would feel like this was worth that like i don't know if i would ever move out of my place or change my life for this relationship because i feel like ultimately i don't know if i would be happier especially if i'm already happy living my life the way i'm living my life amelia and bennett uh talk about oh wait so Amelia and Bennett have their friends over and they basically talk and paint and they discuss how they're enjoying each other's company and her homeboy like sits and has, you know, this really deep conversation with Bennett and then he goes into the room with Amelia to tell her like how great he is and how they just have this really authentic conversation and it feels real. And then the friends kind of painted this mural of the city to put up on the wall in their apartment, which was super cute. Like I was so here for that. They have a lot of, a lot in common to the point where I don't think you could tell whose friends were whose friends, you know? And then lastly, Christina and Henry have dinner. Okay. And they have the same argument again about, 
her feeling like she's the one still doing everything and he's not really making much of an effort. So he said he's done and he walks away. He storms away and she's just like, fine, whatever. Um, yeah, I don't think this is going to work out between the two of them. I just don't see it because I don't feel like he can give. Um, I feel like he needs to be one, you know, with one of those homegirls who don't mind sitting on top of him and slobbering him down. Like, I feel like he has such a uh, weird taste in friends to say he's such a reserved guy. It's weird. Um, so I just kind of feel like, why don't you be with one of them then? Like, why are you searching for a relationship with someone if you're not going to give? Like, I just don't see a lot of giving from Henry. Okay, Christina is annoying. But I still feel like, you know, he's just kind of sitting there. Like, do something. <laughs> Child, whatever. Anyway, that was Married at First Sight. They're stressing me out a little bit, but I'm enjoying it, okay? I really am. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see y'all in the next video.